And right now, not only citizens or obviously government will be working quite hard to cope with COVID-19, but that includes journalists around the world who are fighting and try to report as accurate as possible. And we have to save ourselves as well. And right now, I joined by Kun Nad Bunak. Nad. <laughs> She's just joining us. And last night, she has listened to what the journalists, leading journalists in the US has discussed how they cope, how they report the COVID-19 situation. And Kun Chai, are you also with us? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, yes I can yes. hear you very okay. clearly. So yes. well, welcome, uh, Kun Dalaya, to the program. Yes. Uh, glad to have you as an addition to yeah. this nightly program. Thank you so much. <laughs> so can you tell us what, what went on with the conversation of the journalist last night? So during the Facebook Live session, so she was sharing her experience as a journalist. What's so, her name? So her name is Laurie Garrett. She's a veteran epidemic reporter for more than 30 years. And she's also a former Pulitzer Prize winner as well. And, and she's also behind so many books that are related to many epidemics. She has been through so many occasions, for example, like HIV, SARS, as well as the Ebola outbreak. So and now with COVID-19, yeah, and that is her. Yeah. So she has wrote so many books and she has done a lot of research and going through, traveling to many countries to, to get more knowledge about what is going on and how they actually deal with the outbreak. Uh -huh. So, so with the COVID-19, she actually revealed during the Facebook Live that she has so many struggles while doing the reporting as well as doing research. Why so, is that? So what she actually said is that the pressure is so overwhelming because it's not just about the research, but she, she actually said that she has to work every day, 18 hours without a break, only like one lunch break just to report and find information. But what is challenging for her is that she feels overwhelmed because when she goes to sleep, she would think like, mm. oh, did she like report anything that is incorrect or something like that? And the bigger challenge for this one is that everyone wants expertise information for free. Well, of course, we don't want to like access articles that are Request that are specifically for subscribers or even go through like academic portals. Mm -hmm. So, in times of crisis like this, of course, we want information that is reliable and it answers all the questions that we want. For example, yeah. whether we're safe, if our children are safe, or if we're not safe, what we're supposed to do from now on. Mm -hmm. So but, obviously, she's very experienced in covering many pandemic, not only COVID-19, but she's been through many difficulty. And yeah. what about other journalists who share in the discussion? What's, what do they exchange or reflect their views in terms of coverage? In terms of the coverage itself, it's not just only finding expertise, information, which are reliable and it's i think it's like a challenge for all of us not just for laurie but for everyone here it's when we're in times of crisis we of course we want information like just immediately we tend to turn to the media whether it's online or broadcast media so of course the information must be reliable and must be very accurate and what she said during the Facebook Live is that if there is a mistake, it costs so many lives out there. Of course, the COVID-19 pandemic, it has the, the number of deaths and new infections are increasing every day. So if there is a mistake, it, it's definitely going to cause more damages. So she really wants to emphasize on accurate information and how journalists have to keep working professionally even in the difficult situation and we have to learn to protect ourselves as well. Definitely, including social distancing, that which is what we're doing at Thai PBS World as well. So as you can see right here, <laughs> we're keep we're 
quite distant from each other, in, including Kun Tepa Chai, who's also yes, at home right here. Home. What are your thoughts, Kun Tepa Chai? Yeah, so I think I think one interesting point that she she made was that despite uh, a number of uh, pandemics that the world had gone through earlier over the past many years, it looks like uh, the world wasn't better prepared this time around. I mean, that, that it shows in the way, I mean, especially in, in the case of the US, which has now become the epicenter of the deadly virus. I mean, it, it goes to show that uh, we did not learn very much from the past experience. But in one thing as well, I think because everyone is also panicking whether we got infected or we're getting sick or anything. But I think it's the panic itself. So when we panic, we we usually don't know what to do. I so I think yeah. yeah, I think what Archie said reflected the challenge that is that is facing the journalists around the world, including those in Thailand. How to get I mean, the accurate information, reliable information, and to fight against fake news, and certainly I meant to to make sure that the authorities in charge of the fight against the virus are transparent enough to give us, I mean, accurate information, and be not, and that the whole thing is not politicized. There is one interesting point from Laurie. Besides the worries about presenting the facts accurately, she also faced a lot of criticism, including hate speech, hateful comments to be very specific. Let's have a listen to what she has to say about this situation. Feeling like, I mean, every night I go to bed feeling like, oh my God, there's this list of things I didn't do today. Why? I worked all day, 18 hours, nonstop. I took one break to eat lunch and I feel like I'm still underwater. I haven't caught up. And every single night I go to sleep wondering, did I get a fact wrong? Did I tweet something that wasn't exactly right? Did I misstate or misunderstand this research paper? Do I believe this scientist? Do I believe their analysis? And it's just the pressure is just overwhelming. I, I have to say the, the tweet that has of all the tweeted things and I do get like death threats and horrible things. This is so painful for her because she has received very hurtful comments and one of them that we were su supposed to show you guys here is that she has received a, a tweet from from a science editor bashing at her saying that oh because of this epidemic so that means she's going to get rich out of it so that is very hurtful for her and of course it's during this time we all want correct information but there are still some people who are ready to say mean things and to be very specific it's cyberbullying as well it's even journalists ourselves are are have to confront with cyberbullying as well so that's quite unfortunate sometimes so have you ever, have you ever experienced any cyberbullying during your career I think it's common for many journalists to, to be under that kind of situation and uh, especially in critical time like this there are people with extreme views who, who want to to sort of fight forward with you or want to put across their own views at the expense of your credibility mm -hmm. okay so thank you very much thank for you summarizing and telling us the lesson learned from veteran journalist kun laurie garrett so it's good practice for all journalists around the world right mm -hmm. now because we have to report and to fight with COVID-19 at the same time. We all need to be aware of the basic questions that we all want to know is whether I am safe, whether my children are safe, or if I'm not safe, what do we have to do? These are the very basic questions when we do reporting in such crisis like this. Yeah.